Hello, advanced geometry and geometry students. I hope you guys enjoyed your fall break, your spring breaks for a little bit, uh, and didn't feel like you were just trying to play catch up. I know some students may have had to, but uh, sounds like based on some emails I got recently that we're in this thing for the long haul. So um, I'll get some more information tomorrow about what the rest of the year is going to look like, but. Uh, it's probably going to look like a lot of this, which, to remind you, is going to, for me, it's going to be one lesson that I will give you at the beginning of the week that you access from my website, and then an assignment that will be located in Pearson that you'll access the same way you have been all year in Pearson. Okay, uh, we're going to keep it simple. We're just trying to tackle a few things each week in one lesson. Um, and I'll use that time later on in the week, uh, Thursday or Friday, depending on which class you are, to answer any last questions that you got. Okay, but the lessons for this week, <clears throat> which are all going to be either standard 2.4 or 4.4, depending on what you're doing. Standard 2.4, that you see here, that is solving. So anything involving solving, typically uh, found it at under standard 2.4. And then standard 4.4, which is similar. What we're going to do today, three things here. We're going to try to uh, review how to use trig. That was in the last lesson. Okay, so if you haven't watched the last lesson, go ahead and stop and go back and look at the last lesson in the last lesson. Right? Because none of this will make sense to be worth it if you haven't done it before. Okay, uh, we're going to also figure out how to use trig ratios to solve for angles. Okay? And that's called inverse trigonometry. It just means that instead of having a side and an angle, you have only sides, and then we can use inverse trig property to solve for that. So we're also going to review uh, for period two and learn periods four and six uh, how we can use special right triangles So let's go ahead and look at this once again. If you did not do last lesson, you're not going to understand the initial problem. Uh, you're not going to understand inverse trig. No worries. Go back and do that last lesson in the last assignment. Because that'll be easy. But let's review. What are the three ratios that we have in trigonometry? Remember the thing that you need to remember them. So for four. Well, the S in Sokotoa here stands for sine equals half sec over hypotenuse divided by the three. Sine equals half sec over hypotenuse. And we've got COA, or excuse me, so ha. Huh? Cos stands for cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse, and toa meaning tangent equals absolute over adjacent. Again, it sounds confusing, but when we do a few practice problems, hopefully you'll be reminded it's really not that bad. So let's check it out. We've got two triangles here. Um, whenever you think you're ready, go ahead and pause the recording and solve for x. I'll walk you through uh, how to come up with X in just a minute here. But go ahead and hit pause and solve for X. Okay, so hopefully you've gone ahead and done that. We see in our first example here, here's our triangle. Well, if we position ourselves at 39 degrees, if that's the opposite side, then that is the Remember, adjacent is just a fancy word that means next to. So 11 is next to 39 degrees, so it's the adjacent side. So then we have to ask ourselves, okay, so going back to this thing, opposite and adjacent, which one of these three functions, sine, cosine, or tangent, is this opposite and adjacent? Looks like that would be tangent, okay? So tan theta 
those opposite over and eight. We're going to start with that, and then you just plug in what you have or what you're trying to find. Remember, theta is just a, a fancy Greek letter that means the angle. So in this case, theta is 39 degrees. Our opposite side is x. The adjacent side is 11. And now it's simply an algebra problem. To get x by itself, you just have to multiply both sides by 11. So multiply both sides by 11, and we see that those 11s cancel out. And x equals 11 times the tangent of 39 degrees. And we can put that right into the calculator. I know some of you have already crossed this bridge. You have to make sure that the calculator is in degree mode, which it is here. Um, and I can just type in 11 and 39. I know you're probably saying, well, isn't that just 8.9? And typically, better to round the two decimal places to be a little bit more precise. We get x equals 8.9. Our units in this problem are meters, so we can tack on meters there. And let's look at the other example. Okay, we started with this triangle here. We label sides that we have. It looks like theta is 39 degrees. 8 is a press from theta, so it's the opposite side of x. And this is where it gets confusing. A lot of students might think, well, isn't x the next specific component? And it is. But remember, the side that's pressed in the right angle is always the hypotenuse. Okay, so opposite and hypotenuse. Going back to the song, cross four, which one is the opposite and hypotenuse? So we start with sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, and then plug in everything that you got. In this case, we get x equals 62 degrees. The opposite side is 8, and the hypotenuse is x. And this is one of those slightly trickier ones when x is in the bottom. So I showed you last week, or not last week, but in the previous lesson, that when x is on the bottom, you can simply swap x with sine 63, and 8 stays right where it is. And we can type in directly into the calculator, 8 over sine 63, we get 8.98. In this case, our units are feet. You can either write feet or the single tick mark there. And that's just a little bit of what you can do from circuitry lesson from before the break to have this all helped. Moving on to some new stuff here. Um, like I was saying at the beginning, if we're only given sides, we don't know the angle, we can still use trig in order to solve for those angles. Okay? It's going to be very, very, very similar to what you've already done. This trig. And we're going to replace it the same way. We're going to take the, the triangle, and we're first just going to label sides that we have. So if you position yourself here at theta, and see here, we don't know what the angle is, but we do know the opposite side. 8 is the opposite, 11 is the side next to theta, so I label it as the adjacent side, and then I have to say, okay, so Capella, which one of those three, sine, cosine, and tangent, uses opposite and adjacent? Well, looks like Poa uses opposite and adjacent. So that means it's going to be tan. Now, set up your problem the same way. I've got tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. That's what we were doing before. And now we're going to plug in everything that we've got. In this case, I don't know theta. So that's going to stay right here. I'm going to label this theta. The opposite is going to be 8. And the adjacent is going to be 11. And now I've got to figure out how to go from Theta from sides of tan theta to theta. How do I get rid of the tan? And as you guys know from other algebra, every function that is a p function has to have an angle. Okay, the angle can be taken as the subtraction. Conversely, the, the inverse of subtraction is addition. We use all of the angles of multiplication, division, inverse of multiplication, inverse of squaring is the square root. The inverse of the square root is squaring. You knew all this. Well, same thing with sine, cosine, and tangent. The inverse of sine is this weird little negative one in the 
and it just means sine inverse. Sine, sine inverse. Cosine, cosine inverse. Tan, tan, tan inverse. Okay, so we're going to go back to our previous slide. Click on all these gray areas. And to go from tan theta with theta, you're going to do the tan inverse of 8 over 11. Now that looks kind of weird. I'm getting to that on the calculator. I need to go on. Look at that. We go to this slide here, and we can type exactly that into our calculator. Tan inverse of 8 over 11. I picked up the tan inverse on almost every calculator ever. The tan inverse button, I think tan inverse feature, is written right above tan. So you're going to need to first hit second tan to get that tan inverse to show up. And then in your parentheses, you'll put 8 over 11 or 8 divided by 11. I kind of make sure that calculator is in three mode. Okay, otherwise it'll give you something very strange looking. Yeah. Just so you know, if you get a, a small decimal or negative numbers, that's also a sign that you're in the wrong area. Just as a, a heads up there. But we should get 36.03 degrees. Let's try another one here. Okay. So we'll do a couple of practice ones, and then I'll give you guys a couple of different ones right now. Here's the first one. So I see that if I'm at theta, 4 is the opposite side, 6 is the hypotenuse. Okay? So I have to think, okay, which one of our three functions uses opposite and hypotenuse? Well, that would be sine. So we can start by saying sine theta equals the opposite side, 4, over the hypotenuse, 6. And then to go from sine theta to just theta, you're going to do the inverse sine of both sides. And what that tells you to do is you can just type in sine inverse 4 over 6. Put that into your calculator just like that. Oh, I don't have it. You would find it. But please, you can, just like we did with tangent, you hit the second button first. And then sine 4 over 6 should end up with 41.81 degrees. Okay, so our other example here, we're going to start off with the triangle. Label the sides you've got. One next to theta here that's a leg is 5, so it's the adjacent. 13 is the long side of our right triangle, so it's the hypotenuse. So I'm thinking, okay, which of the three functions, sine, cosine, tangent, so katoa uses adjacent in hypotenuse, that would be cosine. So we have cosine of theta equals 5 over 13. We're going to do the inverse cosine of 5 over 13, and we should end up with an angle much less than 45 degrees, so not in this case. Why did I think it was less than 45? Because the triangle wasn't drawn to scale. Okay. This side here is actually 12, so our answer looks good. Sorry for the confusion. So let's do a couple on your own here. Go ahead and pause when you're ready and solve these two problems. And I'll go ahead and walk you through them. Okay, hopefully you've solved this. Got a problem over here on the left. Maybe over here. Okay, I've got 21 as the opposite side, 13 as the adjacent side. So opposite and adjacent are the same. That means I'm going to do the second inverse of 21 over 13, and we get 52.70 degrees. For our other example, um, if you position yourself, if you put yourself at theta, 11 is across from you, so it's the opposite side. 15 is across from 90, so it's the hypotenuse. Opposite and hypotenuse are going to be the same sign, and that means to get theta, I'm just going to do the second sign, which is sine inverse of 11 over 15, we end up with 
about 47.17 degrees. All right. Special right triangles, something we covered a long time ago for period two, and something we didn't even get to in period four and six. So it's practically going to seem like new information for everybody. So let's go through this nice and slowly here. The two types of special right triangles are 45 45 90 triangles and 30 60 90 triangles. Why are they called that? I'm sure you can guess. The numbers are the degrees in the triangles, right? So some triangles that are special have two 45 degree triangles and a 90. Another one that's special is a 30, 60, and 90. But it's just right triangles. Show you why this makes sense. We can do it. So what you have here is 45, 45, 90. And the reason it's called that again, our angles are 45. 45 and 90. Now, don't pay too much attention to all these opportunities here. It's kind of abstract the way I've written it here. But please do write down this material if you haven't learned this yet. You're in periods four or six. This is new stuff. Be writing it down. Write down the diagram. Write down the equation. It's going to be very useful when I start giving you some problems to do on your own. But the shortcut here is that in the 45, 45, 90, these two angles are the same, which means the legs are the same. In other words, it's a isosceles right triangle. So if I know one of the legs, I immediately know the other leg. And I could just do that leg times the two and get the long side. Because I'll make Because all the angles are different. Because all the angles are different, it means that all the sides are different. That doesn't make sense. Um, but it's all based off of the short leg. If you know the short leg, then you'll be able to find the other two sides very easily. Short leg. Long leg. As you already know, it's right here. Side of the triangle and on the side of the triangle. So, the way you can get the hypotenuse is whatever the short leg is, multiply it by two. Whatever the short leg is plus the long leg, you can just multiply the short leg by root three. Okay, so let's, again, put these down in your notes now. You can't just watch this and, and be able to apply it later. You have to be able to refer to your notes. Those notes be useful. Every time we have a test on this stuff, I almost always have these equations on the board to help you guys out, at least for the first week or two when we learn these, okay? So go ahead, write these down, and use them as a record. That's okay. Let's do these examples here. I see I've got a couple 45, 45, 90s. Let's talk about the first one I know. Um, I've been given one of the legs, and it means the other leg has and it means that my hypothesis is whatever the leg is, times root two. So we need to write it as by root two. In my example here, oh, how do I know this is a 45, 45, 90? Well, we just see that these two sides are the same. And it is a right triangle. That means that also it has two 45, 45, 90. So in that case, let's use our equation. Okay, well, our, the only equation we have are 45, 45, 90 triangles is that the hypotenuse equals the leg times root two. So let's plug in what we've got. And we can just call those legs because we don't know them, let's call them L. I'll go ahead and do that. Okay. And L. 
So now it becomes knowledge of God. Right? We've been learning all year. We just get promised to this God. Okay, I'll do that. And we move out of this thing. Oh, how can I get that? I have to go. I have to abide both sides by the new book. And here's where that now comes into play. We remember this. I hope so. Because the more we um, we tend to think this way, but we just think, and I, and again, this is just old antiquated rule, but you're not allowed to add radicals and square roots in the denominator. So to get that root to from the bottom, we said we just move it to the top, and then the bottom becomes a regular term. At that point, we have to ask ourselves, okay, can two go into 14? And it says seven times we get 70. Both of our legs here in the bottom. Here's a couple of your muted pi that are both 45, 45, 90s. So go ahead and pause the lesson. Try these problems on the piece of paper. Okay. I see I've got one leg. My other leg has to be the hypotenuse. Whatever that leg is, the sign of the foot, those are the sides of the triangle in this case. Um, even though the other angle isn't labeled, if one angle is 90 and the other one is 90, that one will then tell us to be 45. In this example here, we've got both legs are congruent, so I know it has to be a 45, 45, 90. There's my high root. Um, we've been given the hypotenuse only. So in this case, I use our equation, and I divide 15 by root 2. And once we rationalize the denominator, we get 15 root 2 over 2. Because 2 doesn't go into 15, I'm fine if you just leave the answer like that. That, that would be perfect. If you put 7.5 root 2, I'm probably okay with that as well. That is fine. 90 examples, and then we'll be done here. So hang in there. We're almost done. First example we're going to look at is a 36 and 90. Again, no short. Short leg times two to get the whole thing. Short leg times two. No. You should just be thrilled if you have a 30-60-90 problem and it gives you the short leg. Multiply it by 2 to get the hypotenuse. Multiply it by root 3 to get the long leg. And boom, you're done without barely missing a thing. Oh, I know this shortcut is getting in my way. Why is it a shortcut? It didn't really help me that much. You didn't need to do Pythagorean theorem. You didn't need to use sigma 4. Because you knew the angles 30, 60, and 90, you could find all the sides immediately. Okay, so that's one. And the SAT, PSAT, knowing these shortcuts will definitely be useful. Our next problem here. Okay, so I've got a 30, 60, 90. I've been given the hypotenuse, almost as good as the previous example, because I see that I can use this cross equation. So let's plug in what we've got. Let's call the short. Go from minus and divide that and we get x is one. And again, oh sweet, we're well, both at the short leg. Now we can use this cross equation. And we can just do whatever short leg is, which was 10 times root 3, but the long leg. Okay, let's do the funky example. And we've only been given the long leg. Now I do know that if one angle is a right the other angle has to be a right If it is a right angle. So I've only been given the long leg. That means I have to actually start with this second equation. Okay, so we're going to plug in everything we've got. Again, if I don't know what the short leg is, let's just call it x or whatever variable you'd like. Uh, I'm going to use x in order to get it. So I just plug in some for the long leg, x for the short leg, because I don't know it, and root 3 is part of our equation. So 
And we get x equals 13 roots with uh, x equals 13 root two over here. But our hypotenuse, now we can go back to using this top equation, plug in the short leg, which is 13 root 3 over 3, coming in here. We're just going to multiply that by 2. And a nice little shortcut here, and this works in any fraction. You can just multiply the number on the top by 2. 13 times 2 is 26. And we're going to get 26 root 3 over 3. Okay? And that's the tough one. We've only been given the long leg. It's a little bit tricky. It's a strange little equation. Here are three examples that I want you to do on your own. So go out and find them. Make sure you're ready. Look back through your notes. Hopefully you've got those equations and diagrams ready to go and solve each of these three triangles. Okay, hopefully you can work that For our next example, it's almost as easy, given the hypotenuse, okay? So I can go backwards and divide that by 2, get the short leg, and I can multiply the short leg by root 3, get the long leg. Last thing here, I've been given the long leg. Shoot, this is the harder one. So I have to go backwards and divide the long leg by root 3, okay? 18 over root 3, when you rationalize the denominator, it becomes 18 root 3 over 3. Yikes. Well, that's going to give you 6 root 3. And then we're going to double that to get the hypotenuse, which is 12 root 3. Man, hopefully that was helpful if you sort of remember learning it before for periods 4 and 6. Maybe a little bit overwhelming, but hang in there. Okay. Just like normal, you guys are going to have an assignment on Pearson that should be ready for you to access um, depending on when your class is. Period 2, you should access your Monday. Periods 4 and 6, you'll be able to access your Pearson assignment uh, on Tuesday. Okay, and depending on when your class is, we'll have those Google Zoom sessions uh, for you to ask your questions about those assignments. Hang in there, guys. I hope you're staying healthy. Stay busy. Get outside. Uh, if you're keeping a physical distance from anyone else. Um, and uh, let's enjoy the end of the year. Make the most of it. I will hopefully see you.